What is the significance of the midterm election on the financial markets and the stock market? The generally the midterms are important because they often and more than likely, and especially I think over the last 40 years, uh, prior to um, uh, up until the Reagan administration, the midterms took away the power from the presidency by flipping either a house or the Senate or both. Generally, what that means is, is it causes inaction after the first term of a president. So very similar to Obama and Bush before him and Biden currently, the midterms took away the power of each of those presidents. This also includes Bill Clinton uh, back in 1994 as well, and including George Bush Sr. in 1990. So what that means is, is generally the country wants a government that is slow to move. Mm. If one party has control over the other by controlling both the, the presidency and both chambers of Congress, it means that whoever is in charge at that time, whatever party it is, will do their very best to enact all the things they feel are critical. Many times those things disrupt the economy, whether it's tax cutting from Republicans or tax spending from Democrats, they have a profound effect on the economy. So the midterms are extremely important because generally they're taking away the power that was heretofore in one party. Hmm. So that's the main answer to that. And I think most people know that inaction in government is actually a positive to the markets. So, so what makes this particular midterm election kind of unique? Uh, we are in a very unique time uh, in, the, in the financial cycle. Uh, what's the significance of this one in 2022? Two things, maybe even three. Um, and the only other time I remember anything close to this, I was very young, and it was when Jimmy Carter lost his midterms in 1978 before Ronald Reagan came in in 1980, replacing him. The reason why these midterms are particularly important is, at least in terms of the economy, and is because at the end of the day, um, the the only thing that I know so different and why it's so important is because we see rampant inflation and we see extremely high interest rates, much higher interest rates than we saw two year in any of the previous midterm elections. So right now, the controlling party in government has definitely contributed deeply to inflation. They have also forced the Federal Reserve in our country to raise interest rates. And that takes a toll on the American people. Inflation takes a toll and higher rates take a toll. Higher rates slow down business. Inflation makes things more expensive to not just businesses, but to all consumers. Mm -hmm. The only other time I remember anything like this was when Jimmy Carter was running for president or had the midterms in 1978 under the same kind of circumstances where the inflation hadn't even been as rampant as it is now. So, and the interest rates at that time had yet to go up. The reason why, so that is a main reason why these are more significant than previous midterms over say the last one, two, three, four um, presidents. Right. Big difference. So we're seeing something we haven't seen in the past four presidencies is what you're getting at. Five presidencies, if you include Reagan. Five presidencies, right. So your your best guess, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but uh, what do you think is going to happen here? I think we're already witnessing a lot of what's happening um, because the market, as you noticed, um, even though it had a terrible November, had an explosive move, especially in the Dow Jones averages in October. That is, it's very interesting that this year is following quarters literally to the, to the timing, literally at the beginning of one or the end of one. So the first two quarters of this year uh, represented a down move in the economy. The third quarter did the same thing up until 
um, a rally in October. Um, sorry, the third quarter did the same thing, putting in lows. But this particular quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter of 2022, put in definitely put in a uh, put in a low and had a huge rally off of it. Why? Because they knew at the beginning of the fourth quarter that the elections were around the corner. And by that time, a lot of the Republican Party was starting to pick up some momentum. And the Republican Party picking up momentum means, guess what? There's a chance for gridlock in Congress. So if there's gridlock in Congress, that's good for the markets. So I think the reason we are under a current um, bid to the market, I won't call it a rally yet, but mm -hmm. a bid to the market is because they anticipate um, a Republican victory, at least in the House, and that will put the dampers on uh, the president and the current policies, and possibly now even the Senate, and that even creates more gridlock, and maybe even the opportunity to reverse some of the policies, especially the energy policies, that have been so deleterious to this administration. That is hope. That is hope. And that is why I think the markets have a bid. But I'm going to add something to that. Okay. The, this is something I saw occur also, even in the Reagan administration. When Reagan came in, inflation was peaking. Interest rates were literally at their highs. And I mean, short-term interest rates of Fed funds being 15 16%. Um, Treasury uh, T-bills, one-year T-bills being 21%. We are nothing like that right now. Um, T-bills are still around 4%, and the Fed funds rate is uh, four and a quarter, three, no, four and a quarter now, percent, 4.3. So the difference here is that even should um, the Republicans win the House and create gridlock, it is not easy to overcome the, the problems that we've created over two years. It's not like some magic wand will come along and take away inflation because we turn the energy sector loose. So this will take time to unfold. It may be some battles. Maybe the president may veto things that are designed to spur um, the, the attack on inflation by creating um, uh, creating incentives for the energy sector to go build and drill and um, create more infrastructure to bring our prices down and replenish our reserves. So I think in this particular case, the market is rallying on the desire and hope that there will be gridlock, but at some point this party will run out as well. And we could see the market, I feel, somewhere between the in the first quarter and second quarter make new lows in the market. And in which case, then is maybe a time to really examine the stock market. But this current rally, I feel is, um, as I opine it, is um, fool's fodder. Like smoke and mirrors kind of thing? It's like smoke and mirrors, you could say that. I call it fool's fodder. I feel the people that are just eternally hopeful um, really need to see the market turn around. And in every rally, it gives them more hope than any fear that they've had prior to it. So one day of rally creates more hope than one day of down creates fear. Right. And so, again, these problems don't go away immediately or even quickly in any sort, in any sort of way, just because um, the one party has lost its ability to dictate policy unilaterally. Got it. So if it goes the way that you think it's going to go, um, what what is your what is your play? How are you going to play it as an investor? Uh, what, what what should we be thinking? I feel as an investor, I feel that cash is still king. That being said. The one thing we know as a as a country and as a people, whether you're Democrat or Republican, is that these energy policies must change. So as an investor, my bet would be to be in the markets only in the form of energy growth. 
because the one thing we all know is if we bring down energy prices, that directly affects inflation. And if we, in order to do that, we have to reverse the country and Congress has to reverse the policies of the controlling, the what was the controlling party, which in this case was the Democratic Party. So that means cash with um, maybe some high exposure, say 30 to 40% in terms of energy sectors. Uh, anything from Halberton to Exxon to pipeline companies like energy transfer, any of those things I think are the best bet for Congress to incent those kind of companies to create more energy uh, so that we gain, we gain energy independence. So that's my only bet as an investor. If it goes the complete other direction and let's say, you know, the, you know, the Democrats sweep for, for whatever reason, um, does that change your play at all? Or are you still looking at it the same way? Yeah, it would change my play somewhat. Okay. Um, should the Democratic Party win, um, even if they win the Senate, it will be harder to get bills to the president that could be vetoed where they where Congress could use its power um, to be able to enact new legislation. Should the Democrats, for example, win the Senate, my play would change by more cash and less exposure to infrastructure. So instead of a 40% exposure to in infrastructure, I'd have a 20% exposure to infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, but so it would change because this way, otherwise the, without having control of both, uh, both chambers of Congress, the likelihood of getting bills in front of um, that represent energy um, independence in front, getting those kind of bills in front of Joe Biden would be very, very difficult. And that means it would take even longer um, to attack inflation, which means it will be with us longer. And if it's with us longer, the markets are going to be in more trouble, um, even beyond two quarters of next year. Generally, look, in terms of the market, I don't care really who's in charge of the country, Republican or Democrat. What I do care about is what's healthy. It's right. the same thing I remember when you have a child, you don't care really if it's a boy or a girl, you may prefer one, but all you really care about is healthy. Right. My feeling right now is the country is not healthy. And as a result, what I'm hoping for the elections is to regain some health for the country. And right now that appears that that would be the Republican party to have um, a victory in both chambers of Congress. So I kind of, I will admit, I prefer for all of our investors, whether they're at flip or not, that that occurs mm -hmm. because that is the, probably the very best path to be able to have recovery in our financial markets uh, faith in interest rates and um, a chance at getting inflation under control quicker. So I do have that hope, but that is um, just a hope. It is not an right. opinion. It's just a hope. And it's not a political hope. It is a financial market health oriented hope, right? Correct. It's nothing political. It's just in this case, um, this particular midterm, where they generally take away power from the current um, administrations uh, that are in power currently. This one, I think, is a little more important because it reminds me of 40 years ago, 40, actually 44 years ago. I was very young. I don't recall it the way I can now as an older person, but I can tell you, I remember what the country was going through then. And it was not pleasant. And it took a long time, even after Reagan came in, to be able to put a complete kibosh on inflation. So I guess my final comment would be this. Inflation is sticky. It doesn't want to leave us. Even if we attack it, it is very resilient. It's like a virus that has been around for 10, 20, 30 iterations where it just keeps finding a new way to express itself. 
And that is the problem with inflation. And it doesn't just go away because even if we just are able to create a better energy policy, it will attack it. But when prices go up, they can go up very quick, but they come down very slow. Mm -hmm. So just expect everybody that inflation will be with us for many years. And just hopefully it becomes more of a nuisance than uh, a problem. Right. Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, in inflation's going to be around for a while. Um, so best to manage our expectations. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video from the iFlib YouTube channel. Take, take care, everyone. Take care, everyone.